तत्परम पर्याय वेदमहे ज्ञानलिंगेश्वराय धीमहि तन्नो गुरुः प्रचोदयाते ओम योग महर्षि डॉक्टर स्वामी गीतानंद गिरि गुरु महाराज की जय Namaste and welcome back for another scintillating Saturday morning. It is indeed a scintillating morning, a bit overcast, but the waves are hitting the so- shore. The birds are up in the trees chirping away and Amma Ji is woken up and we have had a nice smile together this morning. and i told her i'm going to do my saturday morning session and she said yes so i'm very happy with her blessings to keep sharing because we all care and when we care we share we have been looking at the hasta mudras the hand gestures of yoga our hand is a very important instrument and the vedic teachings tell us ayam me hasto bhagavan my hands are the hands of the divine itself i am me hasto bhagavan i am me hasto bhagavan i am me hasto bhagavan our hands are the hands of the divine because we are an instrument of the divine in indian culture this is called as nimitta bhava nimitta n i m i t t a nimitta bhava which means the attitude that we are only the instrument for the divine we are not the doer we are only the tool the doer is the consciousness the doer is the pure consciousness the purusha the primordial ishvara that lies behind everything that ishvara that mahapurusha that pure consciousness is working through us and when we realize that we are not the doer we are only the tool the instrument the nimitta the upaya at that point a beautiful sense of humility comes into our very being in the last now nearly 5 decades of my life one lesson i have learnt very strongly is that the greater the person is the more humble they are humility to me is a sign of true greatness humility is a sign of true greatness and so many amazing people i have met in my life thanks to swami ji and amma ji and i tell you the higher they are the higher the consciousness is elevated the more humble they are it is like the great tamil moodarty abbaya the great poetess of tamil culture abbaya she tells us katra the kai mannalav what you have learned can be measured in a fist katra the kai man alav that's all kallada what you don't know ulagalavu it is as big as the whole world what you know can be contained in one small fist what you don't know is the whole universe what beautiful awareness of the fact that we are a small speck in the vast infinite spectrum a very good way to keep the arrogant ignorant ego under check கற்றது கைமன்னளவு கல்லாதது உலகளவு கற்றது கைமன் அளவு கல்லாதது உலகளவு கலங்கரை விளக்கமாய் வாழ்ந்த தமிழ் மூதாட்டி கலங்கரை விளக்கமாய் வாழ்ந்த தமிழ் மூதாட்டி கற்றது கைமன் அளவு கல்லாதது உலகளவு 
The hands. I am me Hasto Bhagavan. I am me Bhagavan. My hands are the hands of the divine. I am indeed the divine itself. The Mahavakyams tell us that Tattvamasi, I am Aham Brahmam, I am Atma Brahmam, Aham Brahmasmi. We start to realize that. So the hands are a beautiful way of us to communicate the power of intent. The power of intent which is called Icha Shakti. The power of intent, Icha. That power of intent is communicated through the power of Kriya Shakti, the power of action. Icha Shakti, the power of intent. It is being communicated and from thought and desire and intent it is coming into action. It is good to have intent but you need to put it into action, right? Icha Shakti has to become part of Kriya Shakti. And you need to know what you are doing. Jnana Shakti. Intent without knowledge. Intent without doing. Doing without knowledge. Doing without intent. All of these are imbalanced. And that is why it has to be. Icha Shakti Yum Kriya Shakti Yum Jnana Shakti Yum. Icha Shakti Yum Kriya Shakti Yum Jnana Shakti Yum. All three have to come together. The power of intent, power of action and the power of knowledge. Power of intent, power of action, power of knowledge or rather wisdom. Power of intent, power of action, power of wisdom. All have to. Icha Shakti Yum, Kriya Shakti Yum, Jnana Shakti Yum. All have to come together. That is where yoga occurs. The coming together is when yoga occurs. If you are thinking something, saying something and doing something, yoga is not alive in you. And it becomes, you may be doing something that looks like yoga, it becomes jada yoga, dead body yoga. Or plasticized yoga, barbie doll yoga. You know that one, right? It's found in abundance. Hmm? The hands are a means of communication. They are the communicator of the intent. That is why they are called kara. K-A-R-A. Kara means to do. It is a root from which karma. My doing. Ma. My. Kara. My kara. Karma. Kara. Ma. Karma. My doing. People say, ah, it's my karma. Na? Karma is my doing. My doing then leads to my undoing. <laughs> my doing leads to my undoing and then it becomes my karma. But my doing is the karma. Ma kara. Ma kara. Ma kara. Ma karma. Ma kara. Ma kara. Ma kara. Ma kara. Ma what I am doing, 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 becomes my undoing, doing, doing, doing. Kara is the agent of doing. Kara, the hands, are the agent of doing. So you better know what you are doing or it becomes your undoing. When the power of intent and wisdom are coupled with the power of doing, your karma will become, as the Bhagavad Gita tells us, nishkama, without attachment. And attachment is the root source of all suffering. Attachment is the root source of all suffering, says Maharishi Patanjali, Bhagavan Lord Sri Krishna and Gautama Buddha. And everyone who had any higher Thought process has said the same thing in human history. Whether it was Mayan, Maori, Greek, Egyptian, Roman, it didn't matter. They all realized, anyone whose higher centers were functioning, realized, as Maharishi Patanjali tells us, 
दुखमे विवेकि दुखमे विवेकि वै डस् दैट अक बिकॉज ऑफ अटैचमेंट हेय हेतु संयोग दृष्टा दृष्ट यो संयोग हे हे तु वै डस् द हेतु वै डस् दैट सफरिंग अक द काज ऑफ इट हेतु इज दृष्टा दृश्य यो संयोग अटैचमेंट एंड दैट इज वै वी नीड टू मूव बैक नॉन अटैचमेंट वैराग्य and that is why bhagatri hari tells us vairagya meva abhayam vairagya meva abhayam the only thing we fear is not there is vairagya vairagya is the state with no fear fearlessness occurs with vairagya keep it that way non attachment leads to fearlessness that's what happens so the hands are a beautiful means of doing but the moment you are doing consciously without attachment you are free of the repercussions and that is why even when we before we eat in the ashram we chant om tat sat krishna arpanam astu we are giving arpanam to the higher consciousness of krishna krishna consciousness om tat sat may it be so may that be the reality sat the reality om tat sat may that reality be that krishna arpanam that what i am doing what i am saying what i am eating what i am thinking may it be an offering arpanam to the higher consciousness of krishna astu may it be so om tat sat krishna arpanam astu arpanam astu what happened is over the years many people got confused they split it as om tat sat krishna krishna arpanam astu and so i had students saying what is this panamastu is it something to do with the panama canal or something it became krishna panamastu you have to be careful where you split the words in sanskrit krishna arpanamastu arpanam is the offering <coughs> brahma arpanam brahma bhi as the bhagavad gita tells us you offer into the brahman brahma arpanam brahma bhi Brahma now into that fire of Brahma, <coughs> and in the end, Brahma karma samadhi nam. You become one with that highest state of offering into the Brahman. So the hands are the tool with which we can express our intent with consciousness. And when we use the hasta mudras, we are choosing. that super power of being human the power of choice we are choosing how we are going to express with our hands and we have seen each of the fingers is related to the elements hmm? fire water huh? and you remember the ether one if you want to tell someone you know what you think of them send them into the space huh? with the middle finger that is the ether finger Uh, little finger for the water ring finger for the earth uh, the fire is the thumb and the vayu the wind we saw this and how when you bring them together in the samana mudra when you eat by bringing your food together you digest better because all the five elements have come together we have seen this also now today i want to discuss a mudra which is called chin mudra and this chin mudra is often also called jnana mudra and people get very confused hmm <laughs> yes samdarajan panam astu ha huh? everybody wants panam astu <laughs> i like that see when, when you start to know a few different languages uh, and this is something i have gained by you know learning a little bit about different languages you can cross language you can start to actually make some beautiful puns about that panam panam in tamil means money panam astu may there be money <laughs> that's a good one
thank you south rajan for that and we often joke that you know dr balaji considers himself hanuman uh, in his perspective i'm rama i think i'm more krishna than rama but it's okay no issues and he considers hanuman and the other day uh, when kaustub visited to chant for amma ji which i really appreciate the beautiful chanting that kaustub did for amma ji to help her healing he talked about uh, daya nidhi as being sugriva so we had a nice thing and i remember some time back soundarajan saying he is the anil he is the squirrel for lord rama who was also helping and so you know we are building our team huh? i i hope there are no ravanas i have to fight huh? i am not up to that huh? i have enough fight with my own internal ravana <laughs> ten headed de- demon that is within you what are the ten heads your ten senses which are out of control when your ten senses are out of control and bloated by the ego at that point you become your own ravana you become your own villain and then the rama in you has to vanquish the ravana in you so that the higher sanity can manifest ramayana is an internal story not an external story metaphors for amazing internal processes when the ten senses are uncontrolled you become ravana when the ten senses are controlled you become dasharatha dasharatha could ride 10 chariots at the same time 10 chariots the 10 senses and who is rama the son of dasharatha and who is the son the son is the soul of the father and that is why rama takes forth that beautiful control of the senses a state of pratyahara is what rama is rama signifies the state of pratyahara ravana signifies the loss of it where you are caught in the ten senses with your fat bloated big ego and your thick skull and flat nailed featherless biped you are your own ravana you are your own villain we were talking about the mudra chin mudra gnana mudra so what happens is that in this chin mudra gnana mudra a very beautiful gesture we find beautiful metaphors the beautiful metaphor is that we have discussed the shivalinga mudra the, in a class before where you keep the left palm down and the right you have with the shivalinga the thumb represents the purusha the ishvara the big boss okay the thumb represents the purusha the big boss and that is why when we signify victory all will be good you are using this i remember there was in his father my father in law whenever you know he has to use this and there's a beautiful photo of swami ji from a performance we did at abai where also he has this victory huh the divine is with you the great good lord is with you the lord the master huh the purusha the ishvara that is why the shivalinga mudra is that now the individual finger remember what is this finger this finger is related to the individuality that manifests because of prakriti purusha is one prakriti is multiple because in that prakriti rather let me put it this way prakriti is not multiple but prakriti multiplies i retrace those words purusha is one and that purusha gives rise to multiple purushas through the agency of prakriti so prakriti is the energy that multiplies that is why we call it the mother purusha is the father prakriti is the mother shiva shakti this is where these concepts come so here you have purusha you have ishvara and maharishi patanjali defines ishvara as a vishesha purusha he tells us beautifully this concept of ishvara by patanjali is amazing he says klesha karma vipaka the klesha the afflictions inborn afflictions of perspective perception inborn errors of perception they are the kleshas klesha karma karma is the attachment to your doing leading to your undoing now we have a new phrase today attachment to your doing leading to your undoing is karma so klesha karma vipaka aashayai aparamishta purusha 
So Purusha is beyond the Klesha and Karma. Aparamashta Purusha Vishesha Ishwara. Vishesha Purusha. A special Purusha is Ishwara beyond Klesha and Karma. The rest of us have, we are attached to Klesha and Karma. Hence we are the individual. We are the Jiva. Ishwara is the Paramatma because it is beyond Klesha Karma. We are the Jiva Atma because we are bound to Klesha Karma. Now, this is the individuality that is manifesting. You are different than you are different than you are different than you. The pointing finger, the finger of pointing. You are pointing out differentiation. You are pointing out differences. You are pointing out distinction. You are pointing out which means that you are creating duality. Here there is no duality. This is a state of Advaita. No duality, the non-duality. This is the state where duality comes in because you can point out. And in the Chin Mudra, what do we do? We bring the Purusha and Prakriti together. And this Prakriti is what is multiplying, creating the Jivatma, the individuality. Hence, the universality and the individuality are being brought together. The Purusha and the Prakriti, the Paramatma and the Jivatma are being brought together consciously. Icha, Kriya, Jnana, Shakti are coming together and you are doing this. Now when you do this, it is important that you also have the awareness and the discipline. Yoga is discipline. Ada Yoga Anushasanam. That is how Maharishi Patanjali starts the Yoga Sutra. Ada Yoga Anushasanam. Yoga is an Anushasanam. It is a disciplined way of living. This is discipline. The three gunas, the three doshas, the three bodies, all are being brought into oneness. You are keeping your senses, you are keeping the elements, you are keeping everything that makes you up, you are keeping it under control and when you do that, this becomes a gesture of consciousness. Chin mudra or jnana mudra. And I am going to tell you the difference here. Both are performed in the same way basically. The thumb and the first finger come together and the other three fingers are kept together. This keeping the fingers together is very essential because that signifies the discipline. If I do this, it means I am indisciplined. And for indisciplined people, there is no yoga. Because yoga is all about discipline. Adha yoga anushasanam. Remember the Kriya Yoga, Tapa is where it starts. That Tapa. Now when you place like this, there should be a nice circle. It is a circle of being complete. This is the Purnam, the completeness. So that circle signifies the completeness of the whole universe, the wholesomeness. Not the whole, but the wholesomeness. Huh? The wholesomeness. Purnamada Purnamidam Purnad Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate That infinite wholesomeness. Discipline, control, focus, bringing the individual and the universe, the individual and the universal together. Jivatma, Paramatma coming together. Purusha, Prakriti come, to, come together. Wholesomeness in control. This is the higher state of consciousness. And when you have that higher state of consciousness, Jnana or wisdom manifests. We have the Vijnanamaya Kosha. That part of us which has the higher wisdom. If that higher wisdom is to come alive in us, this discipline has to be there. Without the discipline, the higher wisdom cannot manifest. You have to be worthy of that wisdom for that discipline is required. Discipline of body, mind and spirit. They have to be disciplined. This is where it all comes together. So the Chin Mudra, Chin Mudra, Chin is basically the modification of the term chit. The chit 
which is consciousness. And in that chit, you have everything that comes under it. The chitta, the mana, buddhi, ahankara, all the four antakaranas. All the four antakaranas, the internal instruments, antakarana, kara, instrument, anta, inside. And they are infinitely running. That is why anta. Anta, antara is inside, but anta means infinite. So, infinitely running instruments within you. The antakaranas, when you bring all of them together, you have this vast consciousness you are talking about as chit. Chit plus mudra. Mudra is a gesture that is sealing your energies. What are your energies? The energy of intent, the energy of wisdom and the energy of action. All the energies are being sealed together in your communication of thought, word and deed. At that point, the jnana can start to manifest. And that is why chit mudra, chit mudra becomes chin mudra because the ta cannot be followed by the ma when you join like that. Very few words are exceptions to this. Atma is a very good one where you find that happening. Atma. Normally, whenever the ta is followed by ma, it has to change. Tat maheshaya has to become tan maheshaya. The, these are part of the Sandhi rules. I am not a scholar in Sanskrit, but I enjoy these type of rules and seeing how it changes. Because then you understand how it is a living language. It's not a dead language. And it's constantly modulating itself in the usage. And Sanskrit is the technical language of yoga. Do not forget that. Plasticized yoga, Jada yoga can do without Sanskrit. Dead body yoga, yoga in a box can do without Sanskrit. But it's not yoga anywhere. I was once kicked out of an internet group. Because I told them they should keep Sanskrit and India in mind when they talk about yoga. It was an advanced yoga practice group. And they got offended. Huh? India is a dirty country and Sanskrit is a dead language. Huh? I'm like, you idiots. Huh? You idiots, seriously. Hmm? You have no idea what it is. I said, Y-O-G-A, yoga is a Sanskrit word. Why don't you call it something else than if you don't like Sanskrit and you don't like India? Seriously, mad, mad. Yoga requires technical terms that are Sanskrit. You can translate them. You can try to explain them. You can elaborate them. Nothing wrong. But don't forget the technical term is there. Chit mudra becomes chin mudra. Not the mudra of the chin. The mente, the menta. It is a Chin mudra. You are gesturing the awakening of the higher consciousness of the chit in you. You are elevating your consciousness from individuality to universality and you are starting to understand the bigger perspective. When you understand the bigger picture, all stress goes away. The causation of stress is a focus on the small picture. I am going to repeat that. It came out well. The causation of stress is a focus on the small picture. As you elevate your consciousness and you see the bigger picture, stress falls away on its own. It is like, you know, when Maharishi Patanjali tells us, Abhyasa Vairagya Abhyam Tan Nirodaha. He says, with Abhyasa and Vairagya, with practice and non-attachment, the chitta vritti stop on their own. You don't have to go and say, Hey, stop, 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 stop. No, they fall away. Abhyasa vairagya bhyam tan nirodaha. Abhyasa vairagya bhyam tan nirodaha. Tan nirodaha. In Tamil we say tannale, which means on its own. I get that feeling. Abhyasa vairagya bhyam tan nirodaha. The chitta vritti stop on their own. You transcend them because you have elevated your consciousness through Abhyasa Vairagya. My father used to say, you don't solve your problems. He said, you don't solve your problems, you outgrow them. 
How do you solve your problems? By outgrowing them. You grow so big it doesn't exist for you. Which is why I used to make that statement. For an ant, every wave is a tsunami. For an ant, every wave is a tsunami. For a giant, even a tsunami is only a wave. For an ant, every wave is a tsunami. For a giant, even a tsunami is only a wave. You have to elevate your consciousness. The more elevated your consciousness, the bigger picture opens up to you and you say, why the hell am I so worried about this whole thing? We are just a speck in the universe with 8 billion people on this blue speck. And yet we think so much about ourselves and all my problems... Whenever I think I have problems, I meet people who have worse problems. And I'm like, seriously, why am I worried about it? Chin Mudra enables us to elevate our consciousness from a limited individual perspective to the unlimited universal perspective. You become the universe unlimited instead of the individual private limited. Individual private limited gets transformed into universal unlimited. Okay, just to create a contrast. Individual private limited becomes universal cosmic unlimited. That sounds better. Very, very important that we have this in mind. As long as I'm focused on me, 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 me. Everything seems like a tsunami. And the moment we grow from the me into the we, when we have that bigger perspective, suddenly even the tsunami becomes a wave. So important. This change in perspective with the Chin Mudra gives us. This same Mudra becomes the Jnana Mudra because it enables the higher Jnana, the wisdom to flow through us from that Vijnanamaya Kosha. The higher wisdom can flow through us when we stop identifying with the small ant. As you grow in consciousness, you become a giant of consciousness. The jnana comes alive in you. That is why there is no dichotomy when you call it chin mudra or jnana mudra. But practically there are some differences. Because normally when we say chin mudra, for example, in the Dakshina Murti Stotram, when describing Dakshina Murti, <laughs> oh my God, Kaustur, you are too much. Double Chin Mudra is more powerful, yeah. Huh? We all, <laughs> whether people do Chin Mudra or not, they are doing a double Chin Mudra and to prevent people from knowing I have a double chin, I have this big beard. So that is the way you overcome it. You transcend your double chin by creating a beard. That is where you transcend it and you create the beard, beard mudra. Double chin mudra for double chin mudra. Okay? When Adi Shankara talks about Dakshina Murti, that amazing form of Lord Shiva, the teaching principle, as Maharishi Patanjali tells us, Purve Shamapi Guru Kale Nana Vachedat. Beyond time, that timeless teacher, that eternal principle of teaching, learning, that Ishwara. Dakshina Murti. That beautiful form of teaching. Mauna Vyakya Pragati Daparam Pramatatvam Yuvanam Varshishtan Deya Sadrishigana Avartam Brahmanishtayim Acharyendram Kagalitam Chin Mudranandamurtim Swatma Ramam Mudita Vadanam Dakshina Murtimidam Chin Mudra Ananda Murtim Chin Mudra Ananda Murtim Swatma Ramam Mudita Vadanam Dakshina Murtimidam Which Chin Mudra? A beautiful 
form that is of bliss itself incarnate with mudita badanam cheerfulness a teacher should have cheerfulness you have to practice <laughs> seriously who likes a teacher <laughs> you know those teachers in school who are always like mm. <laughs> mudita punya have the cheerfulness be a cheer leader for the good people for those who are trying to do good be good be the cheer leader cheer them on come on come on come on come on that is what we need to do this morning i got a beautiful email from neel i think she is online also i'll just see yeah, i think neel prashar sharma she sent a beautiful email going back to my adhikara yoga course on the concept of you know ahimsa and upekshanam and how they come together it beautiful email i've shared on the rishi culture group and this is what i love when people share like that i learn i grow with it and everyone starts to become such a beautiful teacher for each other we are all sharing with each other we are all teaching each other either what to be or what not to be anyway coming back chin mudra jnana mudra normally in our teachings here when we do chin mudra we place the mudra down so when you place the mudra down on your inner aspect of thigh we normally use the term chin mudra when we turn it facing upwards we use the term jnana mudra so in the geeta ananda tradition there is a specific distinction chin mudra is placed facing down whereas jnana mudra is placed facing up the performance is the same thumb and index finger the other three fingers together all of that is the same now if he was to sit like this then again it is chin mudra because it is at that time like what our dakshina murti shiva is holding but otherwise this chin mudra we utilize primarily to focus on the lower part of the lungs in performing what is called adama pranayama the foundational breath which is the diaphragm the diaphragm is the foundation of all your breathing process if your diaphragm is paralyzed you have to be on a ventilator is as simple there's a nerve called the phrenic nerve the phrenic nerve runs down the neck and supplies the diaphragm if the phrenic nerve is damaged by somebody slashing your throat your diaphragm gets paralyzed you need to be on a ventilator it is it is so 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 important i cannot say how many sources it is that many sources is important that we focus on this diaphragm the diaphragm is the source of the whole breathing mechanism it is the most important muscle of respiration and this low part of the lungs is attached to the diaphragm so as the diaphragm moves down and up the lungs are also expanding down and up because they are attached by what is called the pleura there is the pleura which is a thin like a cellophane cover you know they they sell uh, fruits covered with cellophane and all it's something like your lungs covered by a cellophane that is then attached to the cellophane on the diaphragm and so both the cellophanes are attached the pleura because of that when the diaphragm moves down the diaphragm is like this it's like a dome and as it moves down like this the lungs which are here have to move down with it the lower part of the lungs and so when you do the chin mudra placing the mudra down on your thighs upper inner thighs to connect the upper part of the energy coming out of the brachial plexus the upper energy of the spinal area the lower energy of the lumbosacral plexus you are connecting when you place your hands like this you are sending a reflexogenic message to your brain stem the aprakasha bindu that brain stem where it is controlling your breathing pattern unconsciously normally the breathing is unconscious you are just breathing the moment you do this you are sending a message i wish to breathe primarily into the lower part of my lungs adama pranayama and that is a very very good stress buster people call it abdominal breathing well your abdomen moves but you are not breathing into your abdomen you are breathing into your lungs the lungs 
are attached to the diaphragm as the diaphragm moves down the abdomen protrudes out so the movement of the abdominal wall outward is because of the diaphragm moving down with the lungs attached to it so it is not you move the abdomen in you breathe you are breathing into the lower part of your lungs and the abdomen is moving out as you breathe out the diaphragm is coming back up the lungs are being pushed up space is created in the abdomen for the abdomen to fall so the rising and falling of the abdomen is the effect of the diaphragmatic movement which is why we focus on the lower part of the lungs in adama pranayama not on the abdomen now in modern yoga there's a lot of abdominal focus which is okay because it's better than nothing it is better than nothing but when you do the chin mudra you are telling your own nervous system it is an intrapersonal communication you are telling your own nervous system i want to primarily breathe into the lower part of your lungs and automatically that starts to happen what is called an adamas swasha uh, some people don't use the term pranayama for this in gita and the tradition the moment you are mindful of the breath and you are channelizing the breath with the mind yato mana tata prana when you are doing that it starts to become a pranayama this is our approach to it so hence some people call it adama swasa that swasa is into the adama we call it adama pranayama so the chin mudra is doing that now say i want to sit for contemplation meditation then i am sitting and i have my the gnana mudra pointing up so the mudra pointing up is opening up to the higher consciousness of the universe letting my gnana manifest through the vigyana maya kosha so for the sitting a contemplative sitting we keep the gnana mudra pointing up for breathing we keep the chin mudra pointing down now there is a third part what you have to do is that you extend this over your knees until it is touching the ground below you okay so what happens is that you are now touching the ground below you with the tip of your fingers so the same chin mudra gnana mudra extended so that you are you have to you know sort of adjust yourself a bit i'm just moving back so you can see me better you have to adjust yourself until you are stretching forward a little bit it's a little uncomfortable depending on the size of your arms until your fingers are touching the bhumi the bhumi is the earth okay so here you are touching the earth and here there is that sense it's not too comfortable you mean need a pillow behind you depending on your arm size and at this point you are connecting with the earth this is a very beautiful uh, aspect of you connecting with the earth element the bhumi in what is called bhumi sparsha mudra some people just do it with one finger but then this is the individuality connecting that's all here you are using already that closed circuit and you are connecting and when you do this it is extending that consciousness that gnana that chit into a very beautiful connection with the planet on which we live so chin mudra chin mudra gnana mudra okay and bhumi sparsha mudra the same mudra coming into three different levels of usage now you find this also interestingly you find mudras like this in buddhism hmm? the dharma or dharma chakra mudra you find this those sometimes the fingers are sort of a bit more relaxed in that the dharma chakra you find it hmm such beautiful concepts uh, that come alive in us and because remember buddha was an hindu he was an indian india in that time akand bharat people keep on trying to create a new issue that that is nepal and india and all of this was akand bharat so do not do not bring modern geographical boundaries into this okay it's a much bigger akand bharat concept when we talk about buddha and uh, maharishi patanjali and all of these a great uh, souls atmas mahatmas paramatmas who have lived on this earth you find these concepts a very beautiful concept you find of the dharma chakra there is also a very they this chin mudra but with a bit more 
uh, relaxed one you find as I believe in Buddhism they call it Vitarka Mudra. Interestingly, Vitarka is uh, having two connotations in Maharishi Patanjali's teachings. One is a negative connotation that is a deviant. Vitarka Himsadaya. Uh, the deviants that deviate you away from Yama and Yama. And last evening we had a magnificent session between Kaustub and Shailaja. I really enjoyed it on Yama Niyama. Uh, very beautiful, very beautiful. And you know, this type of beautiful uh, conversation, amazing thoughts. The Yama Niyama are, as Kaustub said, the stand you take in your life. Not the handstand that you do or the headstand, but the stand you take in your life. Where do you stand? They are the Yama Niyama. I love that because they are the foundation. They are the Adhikara. That is why in our tradition we call it the Adhikara Yoga. Because Yama Niyama, Niyama make you an Adhikarin, someone fit for the whole yogic journey. So the Vitarka has one connotation which is a deviant that is deviating you away from the Yama Niyama. Vitarka Himsadaya. For example, Himsa which is violence as opposed to Ahimsa which is the Yama. Okay, but then there is also the concept of Samadhi and the different layers of Samadhi where you have Vitarka, Vichara, Ananda, Asmita. And in Vitarka you have Savitarka, Nirvitarka. So there is a concept of Vitarka as the gross engagement, engagement with gross objects. And through that you also have a certain level of Samadhi. So, Vitarka can have both a positive and negative. It's like, for example, Kama. Kama has a negative connotation as excessive desire where it becomes a Shat Ripu and rips you apart into pieces. But Kama has a positive connotation in what is called Chatur Vida Purusharta. Dharma Artha Kama Moksharnam. Chatur Vida Purusharta. The four noble legitimate aims of human life fulfill your dharma and automatically artha kama moksha when you fulfill your dharma your responsibility automatically artha material prosperity will occur kama emotional prosperity will occur and moksha spiritual prosperity will occur so there it takes on a positive connotation now, if you don't understand Indian culture, if you don't understand the culture from which these con concepts have come, you end up with these weirdos in yoga academia who are conducting courses. I don't even want to mention the names, but yes, maybe I should. You have people like in Oxford who have become yoga scholars and they need references for yoga. They don't understand the traditional concept. They create a reference based on idiots like Max Mueller. An Indologist, the greatest Indologist who never came to India. How can you be an Indologist without being living in India? Seriously, I tell you, what idiots we have. And these guys who never understood the culture became the experts on a culture. They are quoted by somebody who quotes. It's like nonsense is quoted by another nonsense is quoted by another nonsense and suddenly it's supposed to make sense. These type of yoga scholars, these type of yoga scholars who abund in the modern academia, they are the biggest disservice to the yoga tradition. And this is a lot of gangster yogi. Yesterday, last night, we opened the package from Kalavati. And she has uh, sent me actual gangster yogi hat and glasses. Uh, so you are going to soon have that gangster yogi in person. I don't need a filter anymore. I was tempted to do it this morning. Then I said, no, I will not. The scintillating Saturdays will be more decent. The decent Ananda. I just wanted to come back to Viba's question. Would someone on a ventilator whose fingers are manipulated into chin mudra have a positive impact for lung function? Absolutely, Vibha. You know what? For the last few days, I have been working with Ammaji and bringing her fingers of her right hand, which she is not using much. And yesterday I was working on the right hand while Divya was working on Ammaji's left hand, which is functional. And... Perform bringing the fingers together into Chin Mudra for some time, Chinmaya Mudra, Adi Mudra. These three mudras we were doing, and I was doing it on the right side, Divya on the left side. 
definitely 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 uh, we 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 don't understand how these work at multiple levels uh, and if your intent is there recently someone shared with me a beautiful story i think it was alet from um, south africa on how someone changing their pattern of breathing enabled another person to whom they are connected to feel better and they were talking about this mother who was doing work and was suddenly told that her child in school was having you know a bad upset and you know she was caught between here and there and she realized she needed to start breathing deeply a slow deep dirga pranayama to control her own emotions at that time and as she was doing it as she was doing it suddenly the school phones and says your child seems to have calmed down now so even even across the distance people do pranic healing in person they do it in distance yes these things are real and as kaustub has mentioned with mantra when you do it with the mantra because i tell you the mantric power even as i say it i'm having goosebumps i'm thinking of kaustub chanting the other day for amma ji such a beautiful energy and we have been listening to some of his father's chanting of the ayur mantra and it's so important so many uh, so many beautiful uh, energies coming up the ayur mantra with his father chanting and then his sister uh, mekala chanting the mantra pushpam yo pam pushpam vedha beautiful chants what beautiful energies we bring so the mudra with the chanting uh, multiple layers you keep on adding see it is like we are not we are not just the body we are a body that functions we are a body that functions and hopefully has consciousness we are a body that functions has consciousness and a higher discerning intellect it is a body that functions that has consciousness a higher discerning intellect and understands the bigger perspective that is what the pancha kosha the pancha maya are about that you are not just the body you are much more than that and as we expand we realize that these mudras are not just good exercises for the joints that they are in fact uh, mohana krishnan in jipma a physical therapist has done work on using mudras for people with arthritis very very useful very useful because you are changing the way the energy flows into the hands hmm? it is amazing you are you are changing the way the energies flow into the hands and when the energies flowing into the hands are changed you are changing the way the energy flows into the whole of you i think it's time to close now we have gone a bit longer but today i don't have to go to the university it's the saturday off today uh, second saturday off and so because of that i thought i'll spend a bit more time with you and uh, explore these aspects uh, tomorrow we'll have we'll come back to divya's tell me upper series where we will start the talk on uh, god is durga durga devi charanam and durga devi saranam as the start of what happens next week where we start navaratri uh, the navaratri the nine nights to the mother goddess indian culture worships the mother goddess uh, during this time a very special period and divya is going to be presenting a very special series of um, 10 days of events in the evening where we are going to have um, a series of interviews uh, storytelling and uh, singing and some excerpts from our trishakti dance drama of yoganjali natyalayam so many of our yoganjali natyalayam faculty members senior students are going to be part of this series and we are calling it the navaratri kala yagna yagna uh, is is an offering you do the lower is offered into something for the higher it is you know again that concept of offering the lower so that the higher can grow it is it is that beautiful people use the term sacrifice i don't like the term sacrifice it is a sacred offering a yagna is a sacred offering you are offering the lower nature so that the higher nature can manifest it is like you burn the camphor so that the flame can manifest it is the transformation from the gross to the subtle to the causal 
Stula Sukshma Karana. That concept is there. So we are calling it as Navaratri Kala. Kala means the fine arts. Yajna. Navaratri Kala Yajna that is presented by Divya Priya Bhavanani. Our junior Ammaji as Soundarajan has uh, given her the name. So our junior Ammaji who is really living up to that. She is presenting this series with beautiful members of our Yoganjali family. And so as part of that, this week, uh, tomorrow, we'll have Durga. The next week will be Lakshmi. And then on Saraswati Puja, which is the Sunday that comes, the third Sunday, we'll be discussing about Saraswati and also having a beautiful satsanga on these concepts. We also will have an announcement soon of next Friday, a very beautiful conversation between two wonderful ladies and we'll keep you uh, posted on that. And thank you, Kaustu, for that other name for Divya. Bala Yogini Divya. I, I love that. That's a beautiful one. Om Loka Samastam Sukino Bhavantu Sarve Janaha Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Om Thank you very much.